keep it moving here. Um, um, we got uh, two written statements um, that uh, our comrade here is going to read out. Hi, everybody. So, as I'm sure many of you know, the 34 people who are arrested uh, were told that they are not allowed to be in the city of Boston. So, although many of them wanted, so although many of them reached out in solidarity, wanted to be here, um, unfortunately, they cannot. So, I have two statements from two of the arrestees from last week that I'm going to read on their behalf. This first one is from a street medic named Isaac. I regret that I cannot be here in person, but I work as an e at an EMS station, so I'm either eating popcorn and watching MASH, or sitting in the ambulance helping someone who is having an awful day. I arrived at the Boston Commons on Saturday at the same time as everyone else and was shortly called to help screen for my comrades who were treating a patient that had been sprayed badly by our esteemed Captain Pepper. Shortly after, I and a medical team from Vermont received our first patient, a young man who was sprayed in the eyes and mouth. It was my first time encountering pepper spray and I've got to say, would not recommend. Still, we were able to decontaminate our patients before hightailing it to Government Center. After arriving in front of City Hall, things were tense when first the motorcycle and then the bicycle police intimidated us in the area we had a permit to occupy. After the Blue Klan left, things relaxed as we settled in for the afternoon. I regretfully missed all the gay pride parades and events a few months ago, but being surrounded by a bunch of queers chanting in the streets made up for it. Yeah. You all know what happened at 4.30, and most of you probably know better than me. I somehow managed to be sitting at the crux of, of the line of bicycle police when I was told by a nice officer that I could not move back on account of there being a crowd behind me. I was promptly pulled over, uh, I was promptly pulled over his bike, dragged a dozen feet along the ground, zip cuffed, and taken to, the, to behind the police lines while they waited for another paddy wagon. <laughs> they were trying to sort us by gender, but come on, we're queer. <laughs> <laughs> so, a furry, a weatherman, and a Jew were thrown along with a disabled vet, a minor, and an amazing young comrade who I can't think of a, think of a good epithet for. What followed were the greatest two hours of my life to date, in which I had the privilege of treating five of our comrades while the cops left us sitting in a metal box. For two hours, we all took off our shirts because it was hot and pepper spray is hot, which caused the police some discomfort as they let us out and went, ah, booze. <laughs> Again, they did a poor job of sorting us out by gender. <laughs> besides, that, a bit, besides that, a bit of situational humor, we passed the time singing union songs and talking political tendencies. <laughs> Upon our arrival at the station, I wasn't back my shirt. I was thrown in my medic bag. I was thrown in my medic bag along with all the gear in my pockets, besides my shears, which were confiscated. And I booked with a copy. And I was booked with a copy of my fingerprints and a photograph being sent to the FBI. I was told. <laughs> the FBI sent them back because I was smiling. <laughs> so apparently, they didn't have a sense of humor. We were sorted with the three ma adult male comrades being kept until midnight before being let out. Still shirtless, mind you, and promptly given chocolate and hugs from our jail support team. <laughs> Wednesday for arraignment was a bit of a blur, but I was issued, issued a null pro against the judge's wishes immediately before he threw the next comrade's lawyer in jail for reading the law. <laughs> that were a lot of waiting to see what happened, but mostly all of us got through it okay. My hat's off to the comrades who were arraigned on 
Tuesday while the judge was throwing a hissy fit. So here I am, uninjured except for a stabbed elbow and a missing pair of shears. They were good shears at that, so I'm a bit mad about it. And continuing to serve my community in the same way I had the privilege of serving the community here last week. Solidarity, and I'll see you all at the next one. So there's one more. Uh, this is a statement by an uh, individual who was arrested named Jackson Bennett. The actions committed on behalf of the state of Massachusetts over the past week are a disgusting display of the destruction of liberty in our time. Not only was this event built on the idea, ideas of division and discrimination, allowed free reign of the city of Boston, but was given a level of protection not only never extended to the marginalized people of the LGBTQIA community, but a level of protection beyond any scope of reason. The events that unfolded this last Saturday send a clear message that our leaders do not have the interests of the people at heart. That's right. That's right. That's right. That the will of the state is not only separate from the will of the people, but that it is somehow superior to it. And so I will send this message back. As I marched the streets of Boston this past Saturday, shoulder to shoulder with comrades from all over the city, all over Massachusetts, all over this nation, I saw something stronger than steel barricades and brighter than the sun. I saw men and women, seniors and children, every race and history stand shoulder to shoulder, walk hand in hand, speak with one voice. I saw the power of I saw the power the people have together. I saw Sorry. I saw I saw solidarity. No amount of hateful gestures, lies, cruelty or mace will ever break that. I was with the crowd that stood by the Holocaust Memorial when the police arrived. When they began to use their bikes as rams and, and rammed an older woman, a medic, behind me was knocked to the ground. Whoa. A cop threw their bike on her to keep her pinned. Shame! 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 Shame. That's right, shame. shame. And my, and my, and caught my foot. Meanwhile, another maced the crowd. I attempted to free us from the bike and get off the street. I was quickly grabbed and maced down the top of my glasses before being tossed to the ground. In that moment on the ground, blinded, gagging on their chemicals, helpless, I was not afraid. In the face of oppression, I have never stood taller. I have not been humiliated. My spirit has never been stronger because in this time of hate, we will never be broken. We have solidarity. <laughs>